I mean, the policy on that issue starts with the, uh, the top. Um, if you have a very pro-development mayor who doesn't have uh, a background or an interest uh, about the quality of life issues of New York, um, arts preservation, et cetera, um, then it's going to tip one way during that period of time, and the opposite is true. Um, I also think that each one of these is a, it has to be judged on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you could say that if there were a significant landmark um, that was in conflict with a private condo development, um, the landmark should obviously prevail. But if the New York Stock Exchange says we're leaving in New York unless we have this site, um, and they're serious about it and you believe them, then you have to look at it a little differently. Because, so it's a balancing act, um, uh, which I think should, you know, should basically, um, it should side with the preservation um, so, you know, part of this uh, equation, um, but it has to be judged on a case-by-case -case basis. I think the the uh, quality of the unbuilt of the um, public environment uh, is getting better and better. I mean, things like uh, you know Jeanette Sadek Khan's um, transportation uh, improvements, uh, public space in general, the waterfront um, programs. Um, I think um, I'm not sure about how I feel about buildings. There have been some good individual buildings, um, private development. Um, I think being in an environment where they know that the city expects that of them, developers are more likely to, um, you know, uh, pursue good design. But there are also some projects that I think are very questionable in terms of uh, uh, design. Best buildings, I mean, there are individual buildings. I love the Gary building. Um, uh, I, I love some other buildings, but again, I go back to the, you know, the real most important improvement is always the pub public space. Buildings can, you know, vary in terms of quality within that. But creating a great public environment, which I think this administration is doing, uh, both from the City Planning Commission and from Transportation and others, and Parks Department, of course, um, is paramount. I don't think they have failures. I think there are some, um, from my point of view, some bad things that were inherited uh, pretty much in undoable form uh, from, the state, from state decisions, um, largely made either before um, or very early in the Bloomberg administration and not something they could have controlled. Um, that means ground zero, uh, Atlantic Yards. I can't think of a really good big, pro you know, big public, pro big pro uh, private part, uh, you know, project. Or, um, so I think that's where the great failing is, but it's not a Bloomberg failing. Um, and I, going back again, I mean, the real successes are, they're not, many of them are not built yet. I mean, Governor's Island today is gonna be one of the, you know, that could be a great part of the legacy. Um, it's just a fantastic uh, project to take on as a major priority. And I think that's gonna be um, a, a really wonderful place for New York, and I think it's fair to compare it to the other great um, parks because the design is uh, incredible, the location is unique. Uh, we're going to have, uh, we'll be the first tenant there next year with our uh, Urban Assembly Harbor School. Um, so we, I've spent a lot of time out there and it's, uh, it's a magnificent place to be. Um, I th there are a few. Um, one is to continue this um, emphasis on quality of design. Um, because that directly affects the economy, in my opinion, it directly affects, um, you know, the, the, the mental state, safety, and all of those other things. Design is not simply limited to how does that building look to me. Um, it's central to, to uh, a, lot of it, a lot of city issues. Um, I think the focus uh, on open space is, of course, you know, critically important. Uh, I mean, above all, the focus is on, needs to be on things that are not about the built environment. Uh, education and safety, I would say, the top two. Um, that are going to determine what kind of a determine what kind of a city we are now, and this kind of city we're becoming. And on those fronts, I think this has been an exemplary um, administration. And uh, and the final one, which they have, which may well be his greatest legacy, is Plan YC, um, because it's the first. We're thinking about the future in a realistic way. Um, sustainability is going to be one of the monumental issues that 
uh, all cities are going to have to deal with, and he's very far out front on this. Um, and if that program is implemented, you know, long, uh, in the way that it's intended to be, um, I think that's going to be possibly the greatest legacy. You know, it's interesting. Um, again, I don't think it's going to depend that much on the built environment. I mean, how do we look at, you know, the Lindsay administration now um, positively, but how much of an impact has it had on the kind of um, city we are? I don't think uh, huge. I think we're going to look back and, you know, say, look back at what did we do about sustainability? Did we really plan for it? Or we, did we really adapt for it? Um, by that, I mean, I don't personally think that uh, watching Washington these days that we're going to do really uh, good things about uh, the environment, which is a disaster. But if a city acknowledges that, it needs to begin planning for, okay, these bad things are actually going to happen. And do we start um, planning for those and building towards those? Um, and I haven't seen a city really do that. I mean, we sort of all go along and say, well, I'm sure they're going to fix this. Um, but I don't think they are in time for it not to have a significant impact on um, cities. Well, I mean, I've moved from urban development to education for a reason, and that is that I've, you know, it took me a while in life to come to the conclusion that that is the central issue. Um, I mean, the, the most unhealthy thing happening in the country and happening here more than anywhere else, this New York State and city, is the um, rapid, rapidly growing um, gap in uh, economic, um, you know, terms, of, uh, terms. that's that um, growing apart that started in the mid-1970s and accelerated um, and is accelerating now as a result of this recession that ultimately, to me, can destroy the quality of life in a city um, and the health of a city, um, the competitiveness of a city. I mean, I think uh, you can have this great, you know, uh, di disparity in incomes growing um, because that also contributes to the, uh, makes it much harder for the education system to function well. Uh, and I think we've had revolutionary changes in education under Joel Klein. Um, but you can't fight that kind of a, a trend forever. And unless we start figuring out how to close that, um, we don't have a, we're not going to have a great future.